Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Bruce Schwartz. This was last year, the same date. This year, right now, as we are today, January 5th. I think this was the 12th. Um, you just saw the car as the snow was accumulating and only three hours later, this is what the car looked like. And, and now I'm gonna show you what it looked like the next day. So obviously the plows did not even go by in the street now the snow you know it gets heavy really bad on the car so here i get up early enough the next day because i know i have to shovel and just overwhelmed by the quantity of snow now you know some people go oh big deal he's in canada it's not a lot of snow it is a lot of snow it's probably one of the most uh biggest snowfalls i've ever seen you know when you when you see 40 centimeters of snow it's a lot but Watch my neighbor. This is, it's, I'm almost done, guys. Watch the neighbor, okay? The neighbor is in his front yard. He has, has so much snow in front of his yard that he is even with his roof. He had to shovel to get there, to get out of his house. So just why am I talking about that? It's because right now, there's absolutely no snow on the ground. There's a bit. It's just to say the first snowfall, um, you know, first snowstorm, I guess we can say about seven centimeters and it just to say covered the grass today melting a lot. I don't know what the temperatures are. They're definitely over zero because there was, um, water puddles outside today, which, you know, water puddles in the winter, we usually skate and we can't skate on water puddles. So this year, nothing's frozen. The lake's not frozen. There's no houses on the lake. Uh, it's still water. There's not even any snow on the ground except for a little bit of snow. We can see the grass and it's already going away and melting. I love it actually. It's a nice change as to the big winters that we get uh, here in Canada. It's, it's crazy. The winters are crazy. And why am I mentioning it? Because Last year, I wasn't able to get out in January at all. And I got out for December, um, the full moon, and I'm going to for January, hopefully. The Apennine Mountain Range, inside, right inside of the mountain range, is a lot of like straight symmetrical objects and 90 degree angles and curves. So we're looking at that. And this is where we're going to zoom up right now. We're going to see it without, uh, without uh, the filter. And now we're going to zoom in. Now understand me when I say filter, it shows you the exact surface. It's just inversion. So that's all it is. There's no trickery here. It's done with a 14 inch telescope, Merificunditatus, beautiful, just underneath. Um, we can see on the bottom there, that's Merificunditatus. So here it is even closer and I'll show it again, zoomed up even closer. Very porous, right? It's um, all these layers of objects over top of each other. You know, it's interesting to see because, I mean, they never talked about it. And whether it's natural or not, yeah, it could be natural, but they still never really talked about it. And this is what, you know, the crater edges look like. And this is the Apennine Mountain. So don't forget, the Apennine Mountains, I think, is only 10,000 feet less than, maybe not even, than um, Mount Everest here on Earth. It's very, very high off the surface, they say. And look at the... Um, amazing anomalies all along the edges. I mean, you're looking at objects that are side by side. So many objects side by side, up to 10 objects side by side in unison. They're definitely constructed objects. I know that for a fact. So long me. So long me. Copernicus crater, color on the surface, beautiful colors. When I say colors, it's like a swear word for the trolls. You say color. Look at the color. Hey, trolls. Look at the color. <laughs> I love it. I think the moon is beautiful. Um, I started with photography uh, of nature, you know, flowers, bees, birds, uh, animals, insects, ants drinking out of um, colorful flowers with the water drops on the leaves. 
changing that into high dynamic ranges. That's what I've always done. So that's why I like showing also in high dynamic range, the surface of the moon. And it would be even crazier than this. It brings out a lot of deep colors, but this is straight up without any filtering as I very rarely filter. It is always that one filter I use. Nothing wrong with filters. Makes me laugh. Some people saying, oh, oh, he's filtering it. Oh, okay, well, there, there's nothing up there. It's it's what's up there. You know, I've showed it many a times. Look at the Terminator line, that line of day and darkness. Copernicus Crater. We're going to look at some amazing things here. Pay attention. This is the elevated side wall of Copernicus Crater. And we're seeing that mysterious tower on the edge of the crater. When we zoom in, um, we could see it because of the dark line that's behind it with the line of light and day it's magnifying the surface it's elevating the surface for us for to be able to see um the elevation so you know it gives us one heck of a good ideal um, of what craters supposed craters look like on the surface and how elevated they really could be because you can see these walls are massive they're just massive this you know we're looking at the geography of the moon's surface and this is around Mare Serenitatis. Again, the same things that we're seeing in Mare Crisium, that we're seeing in Sinus Iridum. Um, they're different though. Biancini Crater, very similar but different. Now look here. These are three different zoom levels of Aristarchus Crater. Now you see the small circle on the left and the one on the right? That's the same area I just showed you. So we're going to zoom into that black little spot, that area beside the white pill shape in Aristarchus Crater. So say to yourself, this whole zoom here is probably about 50, 50 to 70 miles or maybe kilometers is it miles, miles. I think it's miles. But you see that white supposed ejecta that comes down. It's all connected objects in unison. This is where we're going to see right here. We're going to, we're going to take that whole circle and make one screen with it. There it is. Aristarchus at the back and look at the objects. Now, hang on. I'm going to show you where this object is that I just pointed to in the center. And just for me, it's an exciting time to be able to see this, to, to see what the surface. Look here. This was the white part now clarified. So I change it. I go from clarifying the white section to make it darker. And then the dark section gets white. And then I do vice versa. Now here. There's going to be moments, this is Copernicus Crater, there is constructed objects, what I think, around it. And I am going to show that, of course, but I'm waiting to get that clear shot because it all depends on the clear shots. If you want to get a clear shot, the more uh, megapixels that your camera can have, um, you know, it helps. It's a must. It's an absolute must when you're looking at fine little detail. If you're trying to see the little lines and cracks and craterlets on the surface and UFOs or creatures, whatever's down there that I've I've captured and that I am capturing, you need a lot of resolution, high resolution. You need some ultra high definition. You need everything to be crisp, the least shake, the least oscillation and the least atmospheric disturbance. Because some days you don't you you get near no disturbances and some days it's oscillating so much you'd think that you're looking in the bottom of an ocean. You see, this is just like Merchrysium. It's the same almost everywhere on the surface, aside inside of the mares. Well, it's the same inside of the mares where, where you're seeing the white areas, but they're hard to clarify. You have to refilter that again to clarify it, but it's not impossible and it's easy enough to do. And yeah, you know, people aren't used to seeing it like that. And some people are like, oh, well, that's not the moon. Well, yeah, it is the moon. When I see the moon gray now, it just makes me laugh because it's like taking a raw footage. Uh, you see the face there? Taking a raw footage and just doing nothing with it, just taking a snapshot and posting it. I mean, that's not doing anything. A lot of findings, 2017, 2018, was just incredible. There's going to be a lot more for 2019. I'm going to get some sun footage, guys. Um, you know, I, I look at the sun often enough, not as often as I should have, but I will have more time to do so now. You know, getting up in the morning, I, I've always gone to work at 5 a.m., okay? Getting up at 5 a.m. and I leave for 6 couple minutes before six at that given moment I always wish I had my bloody camera with me 
because I see so many beautiful stars that are so close just before the sun comes up and those stars disappear. You know, I want to track them more. And in the morning, there's also UFOs, especially here in Montreal, at anywhere from between 3 and 4.45, 5 a.m. It's like that's when they leave. I don't know if that's why we see them so often. Um, you know, just these anomalies in the sky. So I'll be getting more of that for you guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.